starts right now. A local mother finding her daughter shot in the back. We have the latest on the investigation from police on the scene. Police also investigating an overnight crash after it caused a small fire inside a home. We have the latest. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, a lot more calm and quiet than some people saw and heard overnight. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday. It is December 11th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good morning. Some people started the morning a lot earlier. They're woken up by thunder and lightning. It's some very loud thunder. Uh, I live on the city's northeast side, and it was nice, Sarah, to see. Is that the sun that we saw out there? How, where has it been? Yeah, <laughs> there are peaks of sunshine behind that front that moved through, but you're exactly right. There were parts of Bear County that saw no rain, and then there were parts of Bear County that saw way too much rain. Right now, that rainfall is continuing to push south and east toward the Houston area, but moving through Edna right now, closer to the coast. Here in San Antonio, there still is a flash flood warning in effect until 9 o'clock this morning for eastern Bear County and parts of southern Guadalupe County as well as the uh, northernmost tip there of uh, Wilson County. The reason why there's a flash flood warning is because in those areas over seven inches of rain fell in some places uh, near St. Hedwig. This is a look at some of our KSAC Connect users pictures in St. Hedwig. Thank you so much for sending in these pictures. We really appreciate it. You can see that the rain gauge is reading more than five inches of rain there. This is an overflowing five inch rain gauge, so about six inches of rain at least out in Dwyer's backyard. And then take a look at the uh, ground flooding here uh, in ponding across the backyard of somebody's house out in St. Hedwig. So again, too much of a good thing across parts of Eastern Bear County. Now for the rest of the day today, we're going to be seeing temperatures in the 60s near 70 degrees this afternoon for the high northeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Something to keep in mind is that uh, tomorrow's going to be pretty damp and humid after today's brief respite from the humidity, but then big changes next week as well with a stronger cold front coming up. We'll take a look at that cold front and I'll tell you about those rainfall totals around Bear County and around the KSAT 12 viewing area. Max and Sarah back to you. Thank you, Sarah. We have a couple new stories just into our newsroom. First, a big update to a story we first brought you last week. And remember, we told you about that Amber Alert for six children. Well, that children's father, he's been arrested once again. Let's take a look. Jamie Davidson now facing new charges coming out of Chambers County. That's near Houston right now. Still waiting to learn more details about the case, why he got arrested specifically. Now, you may recall Jamie and Jacqueline Davidson were arrested last Saturday after that Amber Alert for their six children. CPS was temporarily granted custody of the children due to abuse allegations. Obviously, this is an updating story, so make sure to stay with us on air and online as more information becomes available. Also new into our newsroom, we have just learned a third victim is dead following that explosion in southeast Bear County yesterday. We first brought you this story yesterday on GMSA. That explosion happened near K-Bar. That's a construction company on South Press Street near Highway 181. Now, people in the area say they heard that boom. Rachel Reyes lives a mile away from the explosion and says it sounded much closer. We hit the garage door like really hard, and you can even like feel like a vibration like that. San Antonio Fire says a huge scene like this will take some time to figure out exactly what caused that explosion. As for now, the Bear County Medical Office is still working to identify the three victims. And new this morning, multiple shootings overnight. One mother finding her daughter shot just outside of their home on the city's west side. Let's take a look. This was the scene on Texas Avenue near Woodlawn Lake. Police on the scene telling us the woman, the mother, went outside, find, found her daughter in a vehicle shot in the back. Now, we're told that vehicle had actually been stolen. Four other teenagers now in custody for questioning. The girl who was shot is expected to recover. And we do expect more information from police on the suspects and what exactly happened. New this morning, the search is on for the shooter that sent one person to the hospital overnight. It happened just after midnight on Kalima Street near South Zarzamora. That's on the city's west side. Police say a man and a woman were walking home from the store when a driver of a silver SUV pulled up next to them and started shooting. The man was shot in the leg and he was taken to University Hospital. He's expected to be okay, 
Police are still looking for that shooter. And also overnight, San Antonio firefighters and San Antonio police called to a neighborhood where a vehicle crashed into a house and then that sparked a fire. So according to police on the scene, this all happened around 2 a.m. A driver was speeding south on Babcock Road. They lost control of their vehicle and crashed into this house. That's when a small fire started inside. Luckily, everyone who was inside the home at the time of the crash and the time of the flames, everyone made it out safely. Now, we are told alcohol may have been a factor in this crash. Still waiting to learn the suspect's identification and what charges they're going to be facing. All right, there is so much excitement in and around San Antonio. The Alamo Dome, home to so many fun, electric, and captivating events. And with 2023 right around the corner, there is so much more in store. It's been an exciting year for the Alamo Dome. So joining us in today's Leading Essay segment is Richard Oliver with the Alamo Dome. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. I love that, Max. F fun, entertaining, and captivating. I'm, I'm putting it down right now in my press release. <laughs> we got, we got to throw it on a banner somewhere. But no, Richard, <laughs> looking right back uh, <laughs> over the last 12 months, you know, from your perspective, from the Alma Dome's perspective, how was 2022 at the Dome? I think resurgent is a great word. I mean, it was an outstanding year, um, you know, especially, and it kind of ramped up as the year went on. And now we don't want to ever say that we're through the pandemic. I don't know that, that we can safely say that at any point at this time. But I tell you what, if anything personified how San Antonio likes to get together and be together as a group, I think the Alamo Dome did it this year. The last five months of 2022 saw 13 events with 10,000 or more people at the Alamo Dome, including, of course, Bad Bunny, Grupo Firme, Rammstein, Poison, Motley Crue, and oh yeah, how about UTSA football and what they did over the last few weeks? Uh, it has been an outstanding year, and 2023 is shaping up to look pretty good as well. Okay, and you just said 2023. It's around the corner. There's excitement brewing already. Um, I know my husband's very excited about Royal Rumble coming in <laughs> January. It's a big deal for the wrestling world. So what should San Antonio expect in terms of events? You know, it's really, there's there's a lot of events coming up in 2023, Sarah. And one, and one thing, though, in May 15th, there's a pretty big birthday party. The Alamo Dome turns 30 years old on May the 15th of next year. So we have got a slew of things happening all year long. It's going to be outstanding. We thought 2022 was good. Let me tell you, we've got, of course, Royal Rumble, just that you mentioned. Everyone's uh, just so excited about that. Ticket sales are through the roof. So if you haven't gotten your tickets, you better jump on that. The Spurs 50th anniversary game on January the 13th, trying to set the NBA record for attendance, 65,000 people. They're trying to get in there for that. The Warriors are coming to town, so that's going to be a great game. And, of course, we've named a couple of uh, the XFL Spring Football League. The Rock will be here uh, in the spring, certainly uh, kicking off that league. And also we've named two big concerts, Pink in September, the Red Hot Chili Peppers in May, and we've got a couple more that I can't tell you about just yet, but uh, we've got some really great events coming up in 2023. And again, 30 years old for the Alamo Dome. You sure you don't want to break any of that news here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so fun fact, me and the Alamo Dome have the exact same birthday, year and day of the month. But Richard, you actually, uh, you kind of mentioned UTSA a little bit. You, you mentioned the XFL. You know, what is UTSA's immense success over the last two years? What has that meant to the Dome? It's meant a lot. In fact, you kind of think that UTSA success, their recruiting to be able to bring in some of the players they brought in, uh, part of it stems from playing in the Alamo Dome. I mean, not too many college football teams get a domed stadium, what the, the kind of atmosphere that UTSA has for its ball games. And I to, hats off to Jeff Trailer and his team because what they've done over the last couple of years is exhilarating. I mean, it's so much fun to watch this city get behind a division one football program. Max, you're a football fan. You and I have talked a lot about sports over the years. I, uh, for the longest time, this is what we wanted. Division one football in San Antonio is successful. UTSA has brought that. And over those seven, the last seven games uh, from September on through the end of the year, more than almost 200,000 people in the dome for UTS, UTSA football and the conference USA football championship. And then you bring in XFL, you know, the Alamo dome was built for football uh, in so many ways. It took a while, but we have big time football in there now. Okay, so next year is the Alamo Dome's 30th birthday. And what has this facility meant to, to San Antonio? You know, a friend of mine asked me that the other day, who's, who's been here all these years. And he said, you know, one thing that comes to mind for me is it's just the place of memories. It's a place of moments. Uh, you know, when you talk about the quality of life in San Antonio, when you talk about 
uh, even even industries and companies coming into San Antonio looking for things for their employees. And not, not only that, but the locals and the things that we've experienced at the Alamo Dome over the years. I joke all the time that they, they've dumped enough confetti out of the rafters of the Alamo Dome to cover the Alamo. And I think it's I don't think I'm that far off on that. I mean, we have decided championships. We've decided moments. The Alamo Dome is an important part of the San Antonio landscape, uh, but not only because of what it brings, but just the spotlight that it brings on San Antonio time and again. 2018, Max and I were shooting baskets at four in the morning uh, for the final four as he was doing all kinds of live hits there. And I thought at the time, I mean, those are the kind of events that come in and shift a big old spotlight and drive revenue in San Antonio. Speaking of big spotlight on the Alamo Dome, Bad Bunny was massive for the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. Can we see anything that big uh, to that extent coming in the next year or two? Well, you know, as a man of a certain seasoning, when uh, Bad Bunny came in, I didn't even know who he was, to be honest, but a lot of people did. We had 54,000 people there. It drove millions in revenue uh, in the Alamo Dome. Those are the kind of events that not only, again, we talked about the spotlight, that was an international spotlight event. Uh, for that one night, San Antonio was the center of the entertainment universe, and it was just so much fun to be around. I think we're going to see a lot more of that. Uh, I think we've got events coming in. I think the Alamo Dome is being established as an entertainment center. Uh, and as those things happen, uh, that, of course, brings in revenue for the city, but also brings that spotlight that shows people what San Antonio is all about. And it's the place you want to be. Uh, that's what a, a concert like Bad Money brings. All right, Richard Oliver with the Alamo Dome. It is the place we want to be. Thank you so much for joining us, Richard. Anyone who missed any part of the interview or any details of the events, we're going to have all that information throughout the morning on KSAT.com. All right, time now. It's just about 812, 62 degrees out. Okay, coming up on GMSA, we go, behind, we go backstage to see the behind the scenes of the national tour of On Your Feet, the musical about Gloria and Emilio Esteban. And a quick live look out at the Alamo City. 62 degrees, sunshine, what? We're gonna check in with Zara Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. There's a show playing at the Majestic Theater this weekend that is sure to get you, get you on your feet. It really is such a fun musical. It's about the international stars Gloria and Emilio Estefan. Our Stefania Jimenez tells us more. There's a reason this show is called On Your Feet, and that's because that's exactly what you're going to want to do when you hear pop classics. Plus, you're also going to be in for some surprises. You're going to want to get on your feet in the middle, in the, you know, in the end. There is, you know, a little spoiler alert. You get a little on your feet because we dance with you. So it's definitely a very, very good dance show. We definitely go uh, from since Gloria is a very, like since she's 16, if I'm not mistaken, a very, very uh, young age until the accident, which is in 1991, um, like the AMA, AMA performance. So we're gonna go all through that era. And even before that, we go to the 40s, but then using all Gloria songs since, you know, Dr. B in the 80s, one, two, three, until we get to coming out of the dark and of course, Conga. So you're gonna hear all those like greatest hits. I knew, I knew Gloria Stefan, I knew Emilia Stefan's story from before, but when I started doing this musical, I was like, whoa, they went through so much. On Your Feet plays at the Majestic Theater through Sunday for tickets and more information. You know where to go, our website, ksat.com. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. All right, turning to weather now, Sarah, it has been so eventful for you in the last 24 yeah. hours. Well, it has. For parts of Bear County, no rain whatsoever, just some thunder and lightning last night. But for other parts of our city uh, and out into Guadalupe County, we had too much rain. Too much rain resulted in some flooding. As you can see right now, though, the rain has ended for San Antonio. It's pushing out to the coast and closer to the Houston area. However, there is still a flash flood warning in 
effect for eastern Bear County and parts of southern Guadalupe County as well. In fact, uh, again, that is in effect until 9 a.m. Even though there's no rain occurring right now, so much rain fell in this area that it's still draining off. And so I want to show you just an idea of how much rain we've seen in this area. First, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the 12 hour rainfall totals, but really honestly, since about uh, since about one o'clock this morning, rain has been falling across these areas. And you can see this bullseye right here from Adkins through St. Hedwig to New Berlin in these areas we saw up to seven to potentially eight inches of rain in that purple color there, about six to eight inches of rainfall in that purple color. A lot, a lot of rainfall leading to some flooding issues in those places. And in fact, it was very localized. Again, let's take a look out near St. Hedwig, about seven and a half inches of radar estimated rain. Up near Schertz, less than a tenth of an inch of rainfall. And when we look at the distance there, this is how localized that was. 10 miles to the north of that bullseye, no rain whatsoever. But it wasn't just all flooding or all nothing. There were still plenty of areas that saw some good rain outside of that, like near Calaveras Lake, where we saw up to about one to two inches of rain near Calaveras Lake. Near China Grove, again, in that flash flooding area, but about four inches of rainfall. And in the southern part of uh, Loop 410, about three inches of rainfall from downtown through Mitchell Lake. But unfortunately, there were those who missed out completely on the rain, including those in northern Bear County, northwestern Bear County, and across the hill country. Elsewhere, we did see some decent rain near Floresville and Poth. Speaking of Wilson County, because so much rain fell upstream of Cibolo Creek, later on today, there could be some minor flooding of Cibolo Creek down near Sutherland Springs. So keep that in mind and monitor that creek very carefully. But otherwise, again, all that rain has pushed on off to the south and to the east, uh, and the front is continuing to push on through the south. This is a pretty weak front. Temperatures are not all that much cooler behind it. It's still near 60 degrees in junction, and the front has been through for quite some time. We're looking at mostly cloudy skies near the airport, 63 degrees with winds from the north at about 10 miles per hour. Elsewhere, it's 65 in Hondo, 61 in Kerrville, 55 in Rock Springs, and 55, 65 in Kennedy. Looking through the rest of the day, today. Temperatures are going to be cooler than they have been the last few days. We'll be in the mid to upper 60s around noon and in the upper 60s in the afternoon, right near 70 degrees for the high temperature tonight and uh, today and a cool evening in the low 60s. Elsewhere, it'll be 68 in New Braunfels, 66 in Kerrville, 73 in Uvalde, and 75 in Catula. Even though the humidity will be lower and pleasantly lower today, by tomorrow, humidity returns, and that'll actually result in a pretty drizzly and damp day tomorrow. We'll be looking at a drizzle and fog throughout the day tomorrow with a high temperature of 72. Then a more potent cold front moves through Tuesday, sweeping away the humidity, bringing the sunshine, chilly mornings and cool afternoons. I'll be talking more about that cold front coming up in the next half hour. Love to see sunshine in our future, especially that all caps low humidity. <laughs> no, made it obvious. You might as well just put like serenity. Serenity now. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Time now, 821, 63 degrees out. All right, a San Antonio artist is trying to bring more Christmas spirit to the community. Next, how he's doing so with his latest mural. And before we head to break, a quick look at those lotto numbers. Your pick three numbers, 572, Fireball 8. Daily 4, 8759, Fireball 3. Cash 5, 2, 13, 29, 30, 35. Texas Lotto, 18, 21, 29, 31, 47, 48. Here are the Powerball numbers, 9, 23, 47, 49, 68, Powerball 19, Power Play 2. Good morning and welcome back. A local artist hoping to bring some much needed holiday spirit to San Antonio with his latest piece. Colton Valentine has created a one of a kind holiday mural with a South Texas twist. I love this mural. <laughs> Looks like the old school Coca-Cola Santas yeah. on, the, on the bottle, on the glass bottles. So take a look. The mural shows Santa with a big red and even has a face tattoo. The mural located at 317 West Jones Avenue near the San Antonio Museum of Art. Oh, that's right near us. Yeah. 
Valentine says he hopes his artwork will connect with locals on a cultural level. The mural is part of a holiday hunt that Valentine is putting on through December to learn more. Awesome. or where you can keep up with his latest creations, head to ksat.com. And Valentine has done such amazing pieces throughout the, war throughout the year. Also, huge birthday alert. This is our photographer, Timmy. Happy birthday, Timmy. Timmy <laughs> has been at KSAT for, I think, what, 20 plus years, 25 yeah, plus years? Yeah, but I don't want to, you know. His age. No, but you he, look great, he loves to tell you the story about how much he how long he's been here at KSAT. He's a wonderful photographer and now he's one of our editors during mm -hmm. the week at GMSA. We hope you have a wonderful birthday, Timmy. All right. Time now is 827, 63 degrees out. Coming up, the latest in Ukraine video showing the destruction in one eastern Ukrainian city. What Ukraine's President Zelensky is saying. And still ahead, new data showing the Mauna Loa volcano may soon be coming to an end. We have the latest from scientists. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, December 11th. It is, and you know what? Still doesn't feel like December. Even yesterday, got some weather, but it was, it was pretty calm and quiet out there until like the sun went down. Humid cloudy not even we didn't even see the sun yesterday didn't even see the sun and then overnight sarah some of us had those thunderstorms but some people didn't get any rain at all i know it's some i was one of those people who didn't get any rain at all but i did hear the thunder outside and this is a picture sent in by one of our ksat viewers out near the converse area of the lightning last night a really beautiful picture here you may think it's in black and white but it's not you can actually see the colored christmas lights there on the house but just very electrified storm last night. It even dropped some quarter sized hail in New Berlin, but this was the big story. It also dropped about five to eight inches of rain out across East Bear County. This is a look at uh, someone's backyard in the St. Hedwig area. And again, up to about five to eight inches of rainfall. This is a look at one of those rain gauges overflowing. It's a five inch rain gauge overflowing from the amount of rain yesterday. And it was very, very localized. Please send in your pictures through our KSAC Connect feature on our weather app if you do have any pictures. You can see, again, just how localized this bullseye of rain is because there's still a flash flood warning in effect for eastern Bear County, southern Guadalupe County as all of that rain just drains off. That is in effect until about nine. So for about the next 30 minutes or so, remember if you run into any roadways that are covered with water, turn around, don't drown. But the airport reported no rain last night. So again, a very localized flooding event last night. Here's what we're going to cover in the forecast coming up today. Cooler near 70 degrees. Still some clouds out there today. Tomorrow, though, humid again. Again, another damp, drizzly day tomorrow. But before we settle into that weather pattern, we'll get a potent cold front on Tuesday and then it's above eye to the humidity. Hello to the sunshine and cooler temperatures too. details coming up in a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Now to a big update of a mother whose child was shot and killed in Uvalde. Her daughter was taken from her, but that didn't stop Kimberly Rubio for fighting for change in her daughter's honor. And it also didn't stop her from finishing school. One of the best students in her class, a 3.8 GPA. Now, this achievement coming six months since her daughter, Lexi Rubio, was shot and killed at Robb Elementary. Kimberly says she was thinking of her daughter the entire ceremony, and as she navigates a new chapter of her life, she acknowledges the pain that it comes with. Her husband allowing us to capture the special moment after Kimberly received her degree. I am very proud of you, of course. I know Lexi's looking down on you and she's happy. She's here. And I love you. Love you too. Now Kimberly says she had plans to leave Uvalde after graduation, but now that her daughter Lexi is buried in Uvalde, she and her family are readjusting and trying to figure out what comes next. Now to the major pipeline spill in Kansas, the largest spill on the la on land in nearly 10 years. ABC's M. Wynn joins us more, joins with more on the cleanup. 
This morning, an urgent federal investigation is underway into a Keystone Pipeline rupture that spilled nearly 600,000 gallons of oil into a Kansas Creek on Wednesday. Emergency crews scrambling to clean up what's now the nation's largest on-land spill in nearly a decade. A diesel type smell, it's in the immediate area. The pipeline was forced to shut down, sparking new concerns about higher gas prices. We certainly could see an exponential increase on the effect of gas prices if the pipeline remains down for more than a week. That's really going to be pushing it. Officials on site like Randy Hubbard saying it's not clear when the line will restart. You know, I think they're still trying to assess what all the damages are and the implications. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg saying his agency is closely monitoring and investigating the Keystone Pipeline leak. The spill raising questions from environmentalists about whether the pipeline operator TC Energy should keep a federal permit that allowed the pressure inside parts of the Keystone system to exceed the typical maximum permitted levels. What high pressure does to a pipeline is it, it really finds the weakest point and will uh, if it's high enough, could rupture from that point. But there are a lot of other uh, potential causes for a pipeline to fail. And that was M. Wynn reporting. Now to Peru, where at least 20 people hurt during clashes, four of those injured police officers. So the motive for the protest from yesterday, not exactly clear, but it did take place in one of several towns where people have taken to the streets, demanding the release of ousted and now jailed former president. Meanwhile, Peru's new president named her new cabinet just days after the former president, Castillo, was arrested for rebellion and conspiracy. Castillo has been accused of attempting to dissolve the legislature and prevent an impeachment vote. The Mauna Loa volcanic eruption on the Big Island of Hawaii may soon be coming to an end. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the latest data indicates the volcano may soon fall silent. In response, the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory has reduced the volcano alert level from a warning to a watch, but scientists won't, won't rule out the small possibility the eruption could continue at a very low rate. And now to the latest with Russia and Ukraine, Russia's blistering attacks in the eastern portion of Ukraine. New video showing devastation in an eastern Ukrainian city. President Zelensky accusing Russia of burning the city to the ground. Now, the people who live there are mostly elderly. They're trying to get out as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, Russia reportedly looking to Iran to replenish the Russian military stockpile. That's another sign of the cooperation between Iran and Russia. So far, the United States has done what they can to help Ukraine, providing more than $20 billion since the invasion. A Tokyo company is aiming for the moon with its own private mechanism, and it's blasting off atop, atop a SpaceX rocket. It's flying with the United Arab Emirates' first lunar rover and a toy-like robot from Japan that's designed to roll around up there in the gray dust. It will take nearly five months for the lander and its experiments to reach the moon. The company iSpace designed its craft to use minimal fuel to save money and leave more room for cargo. So it's taking a slow, low energy path to the moon, flying one million miles from Earth before looping back and intersecting with the moon by the end of April. Don't worry, NASA is jumping in on this too, hitching a ride on the rocket with a small NASA laser experiment that is now bound for the moon on its own to hunt for ice in permanently shadowed craters of the lunar south pole. Well, back here on Earth and in San Antonio, a local organization making sure children who are impaired or deaf, making sure they receive their Christmas wishes from Santa. Shields for Kids hosting its fourth annual Signing Santa yesterday and officers from different agencies all participating. Of course, Santa was in town using sign language to speak with the children at the event. The children able to tell Santa what they wanted just in time for Christmas. A lot of times these children have never been able to communicate to Santa what it is they want for Christmas or if Santa can ask him, have you been a good boy or a bad boy, those kinds of things. In addition to spending time with Santa, the children and their siblings received Christmas gifts. The gifts are all made possible through donations from our community. So sweet. And then the spirit of giving is definitely in the air. Here's an easy way for you to take part in the giving. The Salvation Army Kettles are out and about throughout San Antonio. Local businesses and journalists, including us here at KSAT, are ringing the bell, including Max Massey and Sarah Spivey. Woo. They were at the Walmart on the south side earlier this week. And it's all to help families in need know 
no matter how big or small that donation, every donation helps. So the Salvation Army says a $50 donation provides a homeless mother with her three children a one night stay at the shelter, including hot meals. And that's a huge makes a huge difference. So you can donate by scanning this QR code on your screen or by heading to KSAT.com. And as you said, Sarah Spivey and I were out there and so impressed with so many people who stopped and donated even just a dollar. It really does make such a difference. Head to KSAT.com. Help us help the community. Time now, 840, 63 degrees south. A Christmas wonderland is back at SeaWorld. We got a peek into the park that has millions of lights displayed this year. That's next. And speaking of Sarah Spivey, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. Calm and quiet out there now. Even some sunshine. Haven't seen that in a little bit. We're going to check in with Sarah for your full forecast. San Antonio's annual Christmas celebration with 9 million lights is back at SeaWorld. Our meteorologist Mia went to see what it was all about. Let's check it out. Hey everyone, meteorologist Mia Montgomery here. This is my first Christmas season back here in San Antonio and at KSAT, so we wanted to go look for some fun, festive things to do around town. So we came out here to SeaWorld for their annual Christmas celebration. Let's head inside and see all the wonderful things they've got going on this year. All right, y'all, we are here with for having us out oh, here today. To so festive. What can people expect when they do come out here to the Christmas celebration? We're right off the bat walking into the gates, nine million lights. I know because I counted them. No, just kidding. <laughs> Although we all, all the employees in the park took turns putting some of the lights up. Is there anything new here at the park? For Christmas this year is a show called Oh Wondrous Night. You know the story of the nativity and the very yeah. first Christmas. Well, we're going to tell that story, but the way we do it here at SeaWorld is with animals. How unique. Well, should we go meet some of those animals? I think maybe we should meet some animals. All right. All right, y'all. Now we are here with Drew, who is not only a cast member in Oh Wondrous Night, but is also a caretaker of these amazing camels. Tell us about some of the adaptations of some of these camels. How about you come in a little closer and give him a little brush on the face? Oh, you he's see, so cute. He is adorable. Do you see these big eyelashes right here? Those eyelashes actually serve to make sure that there isn't a lot of sun glare in their eyes when they're in the deserts to filter out sand particles. And those thick, beautiful lips that he's got right there serve to help them eat spiky veg vegetation like cactus uh, or other things that normally wouldn't uh, be accessible to animals. Talking about Christmas celebration, we want to give you a little Christmas gift, and that was to meet a beluga whale. Elizabeth, you have an awesome animal friend for us to meet here. Who is I this? Do. This is Luna. She's 22 years old. She was born right here at SeaWorld San Antonio. And if you want to come a little bit closer, okay. we'll get a nice big hello and get, let her give you a kiss on the cheek. If you want to find out more information about SeaWorld's annual Christmas celebration, we've got all of that linked up for you at KSAT.com. Mia Montgomery, KSAT 12 News. I am so jealous. That Very is jealous. so awesome. I want to get kissed by a beluga. No one's stopping you. <laughs> uh, but here's the thing. It was still beautiful out there when she did it. And, it, and I love that we're like nearing Christmas and it's 63 degrees. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's 63 degrees in the morning and our average high temperature this time of year is 66. Some of us got some rain last night. That helped to wash down the mountain cedar just a little bit. Mountain cedar yesterday was high. Today it's moderate, still out there at 300. 20. Molds have actually gone up though. Molds are now at 870 in moderate. So a bit of a double edged sword there. Either way you look at it, not a great day for allergy sufferers. It's 63 degrees outside right now. Winds are from the northeast behind that weak front that moved through last night. But that front did bring some rain for quite a few folks around, especially East Bear County and Guadalupe County. Today, though, no rain for us, just a mixture of sun and clouds. Temperatures will mainly be in the 60s. We'll be in the mid 60s by noon and in the afternoon, upper 60s, close to 70 degrees for the high temperature. Tonight it's going to be mild. You might need that light sweater just because temperatures are going to be in the low 60s by about 8 o'clock. And then tomorrow is going to be a pretty muggy and damp day. But let's talk for a second here about the rainfall that we saw around San Antonio overnight. Most of that rain is now 
well to the east of us, closer to the coast. But you'll notice that there still is a flash flood warning in effect for East Bear County and Southern Guadalupe County until nine, just in the next 10 minutes or so. And the reason why is there's still some water on those low water crossings uh, and quite a bit of rain fell across this area in this green uh, warning. In fact, I'll show you right now the radar estimated rainfall totals. Bullseye right in this area from St. Hedwig to New Berlin. Plenty of rain for China Grove, Lone Oak, Lavernia, and Zula as well. But look at these rainfall totals. I mean, we're talking seven to uh, six to about eight inches of rain, all in that purple color there. That quickly create, fell in about three hours. Just to put that in perspective, at the airport, we've seen only 11 inches of rain for this entire year. So more than half of the year's worth of rain fell in eastern Bear County in the span of a couple of hours. And when we look at rainfall totals elsewhere, not much and no rain for northern Bear County, western Bear County, and out west toward uh, Hondo and Castroville. So in the span of 10 miles, you had zero rain, northern part of Shirts, closer to 35 to seven inches of rain in that eastern Bear County. Elsewhere, though, we did get about an inch of rain near Elmendorf, a decent amount of rain near Floresville as well. And again, that flash flood warning in effect just for the next 10 minutes or so as all that rain drains off. By the way, if you live on Cibolo Creek downstream from that in Wilson County, you may need to watch for some minor flooding as all that rain drains into Cibolo Creek. As we look at the weather setup, there's that system pushing off south of Houston. Here's our next system bringing a lot of snowfall and cold air to parts of uh, Nevada and even parts of the Rockies there in Montana. This is going to be really finally sweeping away the humidity for quite some time and pulling in some colder air from the north as well. We won't be in the 20s, but it is going to be noticeably cooler by about Wednesday morning. But tomorrow, we got to get through tomorrow first. And tomorrow, we will have drizzle, a damp commute near 60 degrees. And the drizzle is going to kind of be around for most of the day tomorrow with cloudy conditions and a high temperature only near 72. So keep that in mind. Tomorrow should be a damp, drizzly day. But then Tuesday is our cold front day. All right, Tuesday is going to start off damp and drizzly before that front moves through. But once that front moves through in the midday hours, it will become breezy. We'll see plenty of sunshine and temperatures will be in the 60s. It's also going to get chilly behind that front too. Here's how that stacks up in your seven day forecast. Drizzle and fog tomorrow for us, but then that front arrives Tuesday morning. That'll knock down the humidity. Our mornings will be back in the 40s. Highs will be back in the 60s. That's pretty seasonable this time of year, but we do have the potential to be even colder over next weekend as well with highs only in the 50s. So we'll keep you posted. Holiday weather. Holiday weather love as it. we get closer to the holiday. I love it. You say it's funny because we say holiday weather, but I used to work in North Platte, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was 25 degrees there yesterday morning. So this holiday weather, a lot better. Hey, on Christmas, sometimes we end up near 80 degrees. So let's hope that that's not the case. <laughs> no, he wants it. We're I like, no. 80, 80 <laughs> no. and sunny, ideal. 60, All right. 60 and sunny. I we like could that. do 60, that's fair. All right, 851, 63 degrees. Well, make sure to make the most wonderful time of the year. It isn't a dangerous one. Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll tell you about a safe toy shopping guide. Showing you this map again, just to show you how localized the flooding was last night. Areas near St. Hedwig and to Southern Guadalupe County saw anywhere from five to eight inches of rain, while areas north of that saw very little rainfall, very little in shirts, very little Leon Valley, no rain reported at the San Antonio International Airport. So if you are in Eastern Bear County, be aware that there still could be some water rushing over those low water cr crossings. Otherwise, here's your pollen count for the day. Mountain Cedar has now moderate went down because of a little bit of rain. Molds have gone up a little bit because of the rainfall as well, but still moderate. Today we'll be looking at mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures mainly in the 60s today we will be topping off near 70 degrees this afternoon and in the evening it'll be in the low 60s. Then tomorrow we're going to have a Damp day, drizzle, fog throughout the day, and cloudy skies, high temperature in the 70s. That a front moves through midday Tuesday, sweeps out the humidity, and makes it feel more like December by the end of the week with sunshine. 
I love to hear that. Thank you, Sunday. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Happy Sunday.